Communication is a huge part of success inside a business, and that is exponentially true if you have a team that is remote. So if you've got folks in different cities, different states, different countries, and you need to make sure that you're all on the same page working on the same projects, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner of Gap Consulting, and it's my goal to help you become an Airtable Ninja. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to integrate Slack and Airtable. Now, this is super easy to do. Airtable's already done all the heavy lifting for us, and all we need to do is just open up that uh, connection. So, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but more importantly, give you a use case as in, in terms of how you might wanna do that uh, in order to optimize the communication between your team. So, real quick, if you don't know, Slack is an uh, like an inner office communication. Uh, it's really, really popular. Uh, the, the free version is incredible, and it's basically a way to uh, stay connected on projects and chats and whatnot. So, uh, as I said, setting up a Slack account is totally free. I have no affiliation with them. Uh, I just use the software because it's uh, super valuable to me. Uh, it's the way my team stays connected uh, across multiple uh, states. So, uh, in this video, let's go ahead and actually just jump on into this base here. We've got uh, an example base set up inside of Airtable, and this is um, really high level. So, you know, obviously in a normal situation, I would go a lot deeper on a base like this, but really what I want to show you is how the integration works. So this doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but we're going to take a look here. We've got our clients set up in one table, and we've got the tasks associated with those clients in another table. So uh, clients are here, and they just connect to the, to the tasks. And then the tasks are here. Let me go to the grid view. And we have, uh, basically, we fill out the client and a due date for a task, what type that uh, task is, and then we assign it to somebody. So, uh, you know, this, this uh, last field here is the collaborator field. In this case, this is an example base. It's only shared with me, so there's not a lot of data here. But if you had shared this base with a lot of folks, you would see all of the different uh, profile pics uh, here, and you could just pick everybody uh, and assign them that way. And then lastly, we've got this nice little uh, complete checkbox so that when, uh, you know, a task is completed, it's marked off. But that's just, you know, the basic architecture of this uh, database. The real cool part is when we integrate it with Slack. So let's jump into Slack, uh, right? Uh, bring my Slack up here, and you'll see that I created a new channel. And uh, to do that, you can just easily click this create a channel and uh, add a new channel. Now the purpose of this channel is uh, this is where we're going to connect the uh, integration between the Airtable base and this uh, channel here. So I've just created this example channel and uh, we're going to now jump back into the Airtable base real quick and we're going to establish that connection. So we have, uh, when we click up here at the top uh, on the base uh, metadata, we can say Slack notifications here. When we do that, it opens up in a new window, and you can see that we've already got some rules set up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually get rid of this rule here. I'm going to remove this integration and uh, start over from scratch so that you can see how that is set up. So we're going to add a Slack notification rule. We choose both the base that it's coming from. Let's see if we can find that example base. We choose the base it's coming from, and then we have to choose where that information is going to go. Now, uh, it, this is, when we click this, it opens up in a, yet a new window, and it says, you know, where do we want to send this information? I can send it to the main channel, uh, and I can basically pick if this is going to be direct message to somebody, or, uh, you know, whatever the situation might be. Now, real quick pause here. Uh, you'll see that we get to pick the information from a specific view to go uh, into this uh, Slack message automatically. So this could be used in a very efficient way if you wanted to create a view for each employee and uh, inside of Airtable, and then when everyone is assigned a new task, that information would be automatically pushed to them inside of Slack. But that's a little more uh, complicated than what we're doing here. We're just going to send a simple message to the example channel. So we're going to go ahead and authorize that here. And you'll see then that we can pick what type of activity we want these updates to come from. This could be all activity in the entire base. Now, in my opinion, that's overload, but if you have a really simple base, that might make a lot of sense. Uh, we can also have updates just to watched records, or we can get updates to records in a specific view, and this is that part I was kind of talking about. So I'm gonna select this. 
And uh, down here, I have already set up a specific view for this Slack integration. So I'm gonna select that and I can send a test message. And as soon as I do that, you see that this uh, popped up here in my Slack, just received that test message. So everything is working there and we've got all systems go. So minimizing that, I'm gonna go ahead and click done and we're gonna see how this works. So basically, this view, the Slack integration view that uh, we set up the trigger for, this view has five filters applied. The task ID must be filled out, the clients must be uh, not empty, the due date must not be empty, the type must not be empty, and the assigned to must not be empty. Essentially, we're saying that all of these you know, fields have to be filled out. This field, of course, is a formula field dependent on this information here. So effectively, when a new task is assigned to someone and it's given a due date and you know, it's, it's all set up, that's when we want this to push to Slack and notify the entire team. All right, so let's go ahead and take this one step further. We have a new task form set up, and in this form we have all of our fields except for that complete field. So this is kind of you know an afterthought, but this form is, is built specifically to allow us to create a new task in Airtable. Let's go ahead and check that out and see what this looks like. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, and just access this form. And here's, you know, directly from this web page, we can add a new record to the base. So let's jump back into the base and look at that grid view. We're gonna close out the Slack notifications and we're just gonna see uh, between these two pages how this data interrelates. All right, so let's add a new, uh, a new task. Let's say Inigo Montoya called us up and he said, hey, uh, I need something done by January 17th. Um, we need to do a Zoom chat and Obviously, in this case, I only have one person in the base assigned, uh, and that's me, and let's go ahead and submit it. Great, thanks for submitting the form. This can go away, and now we see that that new thing that we just added, that Zoom chat for 117 has been added to the base. And now we have to just wait, Now, and, and this will be updated to Slack. Uh, I've tried to time this on my own. I think that the longest I've clocked has been about five minutes, uh, but if you want to just kind of review with me how this is going to work, the Slack integration, this, uh, this particular view had a new record added to it, and this is dependent upon, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that these four filters, uh, or rather that these four fields have information on them. So now that that information is here, uh, we would expect that zap to fire. So we're gonna just hang out for a second and, uh, and see when that comes out. There it is, all right. So that wasn't too bad. Um, and so there it is. It publishes that information, posts that into our Slack. And so now anyone who had access to this channel would be able to see this automatically. And so here it goes and it, you know, it shows us a breakdown of all that stuff, right? So it basically is giving us information here. Now, why is this useful? This is super helpful because let's be honest, maybe uh, not everybody has Airtable on their phone. They're not getting those push notifications. When they do, they can have a tendency to get a little lost. So having this information sent to Slack is super, super helpful. Uh, I am only just now starting to really do this for my own business, but I would strongly recommend that you learn from my mistakes and uh, get ahead of the curve and integrate this as soon as possible, keeping your team in the loop. Uh, we found it to be really, really helpful over here, and uh, I'm sure you will too. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you like this Airtable content and want to become an Airtable ninja, definitely click subscribe and check out uh, my website. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.